recently one of Politics Done Right listeners pointed out in the chat, how comes evangelicals, people that seemingly should have nothing in common with a heathen like Donald Trump, would give him their unadulterated support? And we kind of went back and forth with some reasons why. And what do I see recently on uh, MSNBC with uh, <laughs> Stephanie Rule? I want you to listen to this and then we'll take it on the other side. Back in 2016, Donald Trump won the election with 77 percent of a group you might not expect, the white evangelical Protestant vote. After four years in office, that number grew. In 2020, he won 84 percent of their vote. My next guest was raised Christian and is the son of an evangelical pastor who spent years trying to figure out why and how the evangelical movement got where we are today. I'm thrilled to welcome Tim Alberta, my friend and staff writer for The Atlantic. His new book, a must read, The Kingdom, the Power and the Glory, American Evangelicals in the Age of Extremism. It is out tomorrow. Tell our viewers what got you started writing this book, because you went home to mourn and eulogize your father. Yeah, that's right. So my my dad was a pastor and uh, and I grew up in the church. The church was my home. And, you know, I've walked with Jesus uh, since I was a little boy for as long as I can remember. And mm -hmm. I still do. And uh, when my dad died, I went home for the funeral. And it just so happens that he died right after my first book had come out, which was uh, pretty harsh, uh, pretty critical of Donald Trump. And when I got home uh, for the viewing at the church, um, I had people confronting me and wanting to argue about in politics. Church. Yeah. Dad's in a box and we're in church in, in the sanctuary. So then and there, yeah, people wanted to talk politics, didn't want to just talk politics, wanted to argue politics, wanted to argue Trump. Next day, when I issued a bit of a rebuke, because I was so bothered by that, when I delivered the eulogy a day later at his funeral, then things got even a little bit worse. I was, uh, I was handed a note from an elder in the church, somebody who I'd known since I was a little kid, basically telling me that I should be ashamed of myself, that I was a part of the deep state, that I was um, undermining God's ordained leader of this country, Donald Trump, and... There are moments in life when a problem that has been sort of an abstraction, something that you know is not quite right, but you just don't have the time or the energy or the inclination to really address it, suddenly it becomes real and it becomes urgent and almost threatening in a way. And, and this was that moment. For me. But what was it about Donald Trump, right? When you think back to the evangelical church, what they care about, their values, right? There is no alignment with Donald Trump, the man, except, of course, he said... Let's get rid of abortion. Was that it? I think it was a few things. I think abortion is, uh, in many ways, the entry point. I think it's almost uh, fair to characterize it as a gateway drug for many evangelicals. What I mean by that is that uh, if you are a church-going evangelical Christian uh, and you are taught, if you are discipled in the church to realize that partisan politics are not the end-all be-all, that that is ultimately not the arena where you are called to invest all of your passions— but abortion for many of these folks is not a political issue. It is an ethical issue. It is a moral issue. It is a spiritual issue. So they sort of, you know, they create a permission structure to invest in that issue of abortion. But suddenly, Stephanie, when you invest so heavily in that issue of abortion, then the red team becomes your allies. The blue team becomes your enemies. And then suddenly all of these other proxy wars that, that pop up over all kinds of other policy issues, they become not R versus D, red versus blue, becomes good versus evil. And, and if you start assigning that to other partisan disputes and this guy, Donald Trump, who shares none of your values, but he's, willing, he's willing to go to war for you. He's willing to fight for you. In fact, I would even say he's willing to fight for you in ways that no good Christian ever would. Right. Remember when George W. Bush said that in order to save the free market, he first had to jettison free market principles. Yes, I remember. There's something to that idea here where for some Christians, they came to believe that to protect Christian virtue in this country, the first step was to jettison Christian virtue and embrace this guy, Donald Trump. OK, but there's a line in the book that took me. One pastor told you that more of his parishioners could recite the Second Amendment than the second commandment. He said that the problem with many of the evangelicals is that they now worship America. What? Yeah.
What does that even mean? Well, I'll, I'll tell you exactly what it means. Um, You've heard the term bandied about Christian nationalism, right? And, and different people have different definitions, interpretations. I think it's very much worth understanding that there are millions and millions and millions of people in this country who truly do believe deep down in their bones that America is not just another nation, that America is a covenant nation, that it is a nation that it is in special relationship with God, and that therefore fighting for America is fighting for God. Now, that is blatantly anti-biblical. It, it is just, it is, I cannot emphasize just um, how bad the theology behind that thinking is. Because in fact, we as Christians are told again and again and again, Old Testament, New Testament, that our kingdom, our citizenship is in heaven. Here is the deal. Uh, they can use, evangelical Christians can use any excuse, including the author of this book, because I think even as this, the author of this book was being critical, he wanted to give an out to evangelical Christians. The truth of the matter is this. I do give an out to the rank and file evangelical Christians who are following their shepherd, but I do not give a pass to the shepherds, to the pastors, to the to the leaders, because these are the guys shepherding their sheep. These are the guys leading these people to hell. These are the guys who are misleading their folk into believing that somehow a heathenous, uh, racist, misogynist, sexist, uh, homophobic person like Donald Trump could somehow be someone that Jesus, that their God sanctioned them or sanctioned to have them be led by. So again, it's only, it's the leadership of the evangelical movement who have created that pathway, that psychological pathway to have these people believe everything anathema to the Bible that somehow a Donald Trump can really represent them no matter what evil he does. The xenophobe, something that Jesus never stood for, became their leader above and beyond their own pastors, their own shepherds. Think about that. And think how dangerous those minds are. And that's why we have so much work to do. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.